many ways are available in which to get news and information. For example, right now, you may be watching this broadcast on television, on your computer screen, on your mobile device. All is possible. In times of crisis, though, the need to get information quickly and from various sources can mean the difference between life and death. Focus at Four's Marissa Mitchell joins me now from our newsroom. Marissa, lots of folks learning today at a social media conference, and I guess one key purpose to all of this, getting accurate information during severe weather. You're exactly right, Pam, and many of us use sites like Twitter and Facebook to get information, but today I met people with the Alabama Social Media Association who showed me how they use the sites and others to get the word out before and after storms. I know. I am in this alone. I'm the only person running this. This is it. This is Scott McClellan's Twitter account, Al Storm Spotters. It's also his mission. Social media is worldwide. One goes to another, one person says this, one person says this. It's a wildfire. A wildfire of real-time information. One he says made a difference on April 27th and January 23rd. During both storms, he tweeted what he heard. In their aftermaths, he videotaped what he saw. But this is a drive through I did on 23rd Terrace Northwest and Center Point. McClellan joined dozens of other locals at Monday's Alabama Social Media Association event. Among the themes, how to effectively use social media when it matters most. We've had people say, you really need that much help down there? After damage, 60 damage video or whatnot, you need that much help? Okay, here's what we can do. How can I get in touch with you? Your power might be out, or you may not be near a TV. You may be hiding in the closet, waiting for the storm to show up. You can still check your phone. You can still check your iPad. ABC 3340's chief meteorologist James Spann shared tips, too. He encouraged the group to update their social media outlets often and respond to followers and friends. First thing I do if I get uh, I hear a siren or I hear James on TV is I'm picking up my phone and I'm looking to see you know where the tornado is. For many here, the information and the recovery starts on the web, so they make every effort to stay plugged in. Being able to bring something, a very specific event that is all online and move it to an offline gesture. And that group also tweeted throughout today's event, and they used the AL me hashtag on Twitter. Pam? Let's talk about something for a minute. I think we often take for granted, because we are so plugged in, if you will, to social media, that everybody is. But there are some people out there who may be new to this or may even be considering getting into social media. What's the best advice for them? They say first, just start off by creating a network of close family and friends, and then also following traditional news sites. Uh, I know we hear a lot about social media, but people use traditional media outlets in social media to get the information that they need. And they say that once you build that network, there are also sites like uh, Hootsuite and TweetDeck that will help you aggregate all of those uh, networks. And then they have resources as well, as well on their website. And I'll go into a little more detail about the organization later in the show. All right. Thank you, Marissa.